Street Fighter 6 has been out for a month now, and I'm loving it. I was already excited for it, but I have constantly been blown away by the amount of content, how good it looks, the characters, and especially the combat. I've been in that battle hub almost every single day, having more fun playing a game online than almost any other fighter I've ever picked up. I can't sing this game's praises enough. So I wanted to make a video talking about this game, but so much of Street Fighter 6's gameplay has already been picked over and dissected by people far more knowledgeable than I am, so that really left me with only two options. Talk about World Tour Mode, or do a tier list of every character's text messages. Ryu and Kemi are S tier. Wow, that was quicker than I thought. All right, let's talk about that World Tour Mode. This is the new single player mode they created for Street Fighter 6, and it begins with you creating your own avatar, and the customization level of it is insane. You can make yourself, you can make celebrities, you can make a walking homunculus abomination. It's incredible. Then you take that avatar into the world of Street Fighter and run around learning moves, leveling up, doing side quests, and meeting the world warriors and learning their fighting styles. After Street Fighter V's launch, where the single player content consisted of... This is a massive breath of fresh air. There's so much that you can do in here. Granted, the story is... really kind of nothing. I mean... There is a story, but it feels like it's happening beside the actual story that we don't really get to see. In fact, I'll go ahead and give you guys a little vague spoiler warning here. Throughout the World Tour story, you keep hearing about what's going on with the other Street Fighter characters, but you never get to see any of that. Then it all ends with the big villain of the game not even really being defeated, and he just says, oh, none of this matters. No, I mean that literally. It ends with the villain saying, nothing in the story mattered. Yeah, I'm going to get conspiratorial on you and say, I think there's a real story mode coming later on. Maybe after the first season of DLC is done. There's tons of questions involving the main Street Fighter characters that don't go anywhere, and many of their arcade stories end on huge cliffhangers, so... I'd be willing to put money down that we're going to get some kind of an additional story content later on. And you know something? I'm okay with that. Because this isn't one of those examples where a video game launched with almost no content and then we had to wait months and months and months for them to fill in those missing holes. No, World Tour Mode, and the rest of the game for that matter, is jam-packed. This is indeed a full-price game all on its own, and even if World Tour Mode had no story at all, I still kept playing it and returned to it just because of how much there is to do in it. But you all saw the title of this video. You all saw that thumbnail. You know that I don't just think World Tour Mode is good. I think World Tour Mode is the best single player content in any fighting game. But that has nothing to do with anything that I just listed off. Yeah, the creative character stuff, the size of the world, the side quests, all that's nice, but it's not what makes this the best fighting game single player content. No, the reason why I believe that World Tour Mode is so good is because World Tour Mode is one of the only single player modes in a fighting game I've ever seen that actually teaches you how to play fighting games. Yeah, most single player modes in fighting games kind of forget that important mission statement. They kind of forget, oh, some of the people going to the single player stuff rather than going online might be new to fighting games, or they might enjoy the single player stuff because they don't want to go online and get beat up by people more skilled than them. So these games never bother with actually trying to teach players how to play fighting games. And that's not to say that these single player modes are bad, no, not at all. In fact, let me just go ahead and make this clear. Yes, I will be alluding to some other fighting games and their single player modes, but I'm not trying to throw any shade at them. I know that with a new Street Fighter and a new Mortal Kombat and a new Tekken all coming out within a year of each other, you can't say that you're a fan of any of these games without someone jumping in through your window and telling you you're wrong because God forbid we all learn to enjoy more than one thing at a time. But we ain't about that over here. Listen, the entire FGC is lined up at the buffet and everyone is eating right now. Don't you turn to someone else with a full plate and try and tell them that they're starving. That isn't going to make your food taste any better, okay? We've all got big full happy bellies right now. So no, that's not what's going on here. I'm not putting down any other games. I'm not saying any other single player content is bad. Definitely not. I think that many fine games have incredible single player modes. 
But if I'm here arguing why World Tour mode is the best single player mode in any fighting game, yeah, I'm going to have to make some comparisons. And as I said, what blows me away about World Tour mode is how it is entirely built around fighting and teaching you how to fight. Don't get me wrong, there are several other games out there that do that, there are several fighting games that do introduce you to the concepts and the mechanics and even explain the in-depth, more nuanced fighting game techniques. And most of those fighting games that do that aren't very good at it. Street Fighter 6's World Tour mode doesn't just explain to you how to play fighting games, they do it in a way that anyone can grasp and in a way that people are far more willing to learn from. Let's start there. Many other fighting games do in fact have modes that teach you how to play fighting games. They'll explain all the ins and outs, they'll explain the pros and cons of different moves, they'll explain footsies and hitboxes and frame data, everything that you could need to know, and I have seen so many people in the FGC point to fighting games with in-depth tutorials like this and applaud them for creating a tutorial that can truly teach you how to play fighting games. But there's one problem that so many of these tutorials run into, and it's one hurdle that so many fighting games have always struggled to overcome. These tutorials are boring. Now, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that, a lot of people are going to look at these tutorials and get excited for them, but the people who get excited for these tutorials are the people who don't need to learn how to play fighting games. Don't get me wrong, you'll still need to learn how to play a brand new fighting game. Everyone will need to do that. But if you see all of this and it instantly makes you happy, you already know how to play a fighting game. But for all the people who need that instruction, those people that are new to the genre, they never went past just the basic button bashing, this is not that enticing. This is not something that makes that audience say, oh yeah, I can't wait to learn what plus on block means. Most fighting game tutorial modes make it abundantly clear you are going through a tutorial, which is another problem that fighting game tutorials have always had. They don't teach you in the game itself. Most people do want to learn how to play a video game, but they do not like being picked up and put over into a spot that is clearly labeled, this is the learning place. This is where you come to learn the game. Not where you go to play the game, you can't play the game yet. Before you can play the thing that you bought, we have to go through the 57 different skills that you have to learn and figure out how to manage, and we're going to go through each of them step by step. Most people don't like learning that way. But World Tour Mode teaches you how to play a fighting game by incorporating those lessons into the actual gameplay. It doesn't make you feel like you're sitting down for a lecture on the fundamentals of footsies, it makes it feel like you're playing a video game. Here's how it works. You start off with a brief tutorial about the basics of combat, and then they throw you out there into the world to go around and challenge random people by punching them in the face, and yes, that never got old. And along the way, you'll meet some more characters who give you some more tips and tricks on how to play the game, but for the most part, that's all you get at the start. Just a few basic details, and that's great! Let me ask you something. When you play an RPG, do they give you every single ability at the beginning? No, they typically give you a handful of fights where they will introduce you to your starting skills, and then they hand you a few new abilities after you've mastered those. When you're playing a character action game, do you start with your skill tree completely maxed out and you can do every single move at the beginning? No, they typically give you a tutorial mission. Then you will get put into a scenario where you need a brand new ability, so they'll introduce you to that. And it keeps going like that for a few more missions until it gets to the point where they trust you to stretch out on your own and learn how to fight in the way that you want. So if you want to teach people how to play fighting games, why do you have single player modes where you tell them, hey, here's every single thing that you can do. Hope you remembered all that. Good luck. World Tour mode introduces you to ideas, then gives you time to learn and practice all that, then fleshes that out once you've gotten the hang of it. And rather than throwing you up against a training dummy that will just stand there and do the exact same thing over and over until you pass the test, World Tour Mode sets you up against opponents that makes it feel less like you're taking a test and more like you're actually playing the game. It makes you learn not through training, but learn by doing, which is a very important thing for a fighting game single player mode. Typically when you mention single player content in your fighting games, 
Sure, there's arcade mode, but arcade mode has always been there, and it feels like with the expanding size of video games, the rising cost of video games, and the progression of tech and ideas over the years, arcade modes are just a bit basic by themselves, so video game developers have been trying for the longest time to come up with something new for single player content in fighting games, and the one solution they seem to have all come to is story mode. You gotta have a story mode. That's what single player content in fighting games is all about. It all comes down to story mode. And I get why. Story modes have a lot of appeal to them, but I've always had a problem with thinking all fighting games need story modes because most fighting game story modes are just listening to people talk. And hey, I'm a fan of talking. I do it all the time. Sometimes two or three times a day. Maybe if I stick with it, I'll be able to go pro at talking one day. And talking is a great way to get to know these characters and their world, which is a wonderful way of building the appeal of your fighting game, as I will get to later. But fighting games are about momentum. It's about constantly moving. It's about playing the game, not listening to it. And if I can look up the cutscenes for a fighting game story mode on YouTube and still get about 80% of all the content in that story mode, it's not really capturing the appeal of a fighting game. And also, and I know this is going to be a really controversial statement, but as good as some of these story modes are, when was the last time that you replayed a fighting game story mode? Not because you had a friend over and they wanted to see it, not because you wanted to stream it for an audience, no, when was the last time that you, on your own, actually thought to yourself, wow, I really want to go back and replay that? Now, World Tour Mode does have a story, but as I said, it's so inconsequential. It is in no way the main appeal of the game. It is only there so they can give you some kind of a direction to move when you feel like it. It's just there so that way you can say, well, I did all the stuff in this area, what should I do now? Oh right, the whole thing about the tournament and the gangs, yeah, I guess I can get back to that. And that is because the main appeal of World Tour Mode is actually fighting. It's going around and getting into battles with other characters. It's about doing, not listening. And when it comes to video games, typically the act of playing them is the most rewarding part. And because of that, I kept playing this mode long after I had finished the story. I kept wanting to find all the little secrets, find the hidden challenges, rank up all the characters. And it's because this game is designed to keep you playing. But you don't just keep playing World Tour because there's so many things to do. It's because the entire structure of World Tour is designed to encourage you to actually do them. When it comes to any kind of an open world or RPG or any other genre of video game that's meant to be huge and take up dozens and dozens of hours, if you want to keep people playing for all that time, you need to master the loop. You know what the loop is. It's when a video game gives you multiple different things that you can do, but every time that you do one of them, it ends up impacting another thing that you can do, encouraging you to go and check those other options out, which then impacts another thing that you can do, encouraging you to check that out, and then it all just keeps going like that over and over and over again. Well, World Tour realizes the purpose of the loop, and they nail it. You see, each Street Fighter character you meet becomes your teacher, and you can rank them up as you study under them all the way up to level 20 and with each rank, you'll unlock something. Maybe it's a new conversation from them, maybe it's something from the gallery, maybe it's a new side quest, or maybe it's a new move from that teacher that you can then give to your character. Now, how do you level your relationship with these teachers up? Well, there's actually two different relationships that you can rank up with them, the personal relationship and the mastery relationship. You rank up the personal stuff by doing requests for them, fighting them in combat, or just giving them gifts. And if you max that out, then you get a costume for them, which is really good. That's a solid bonus for maxing out one of these paths. But to rank up the mastery path, you have to actually gain experience under them. How do you gain experience? Simple. By fighting as them. You have to actually fight using their style in order to rank up their mastery level. Meaning, if you want those new side quests, that new dialogue, those new gallery images, you have to actually get experience playing as that character. And even if you don't care about that, if you only care about ranking up the personal stats and you just want to get that new costume, guess what? Ranking up the mastery level also ranks up that personal connection. Meaning, 
even if you just want the costume, you're still going to have to learn to fight as them a little bit. Or you can also fight against other characters out there in the world who are also using that character's style. Meaning this game encourages you to not only learn how to fight as these characters, but also to learn the matchups, to learn how each character responds to all the other characters. But it goes so much further than that. As I said, you learn new moves as you level up. And as I pointed out earlier, this is great because in every other genre of game that is designed to be complex with tons of mechanics, they never give you all the mechanics at once. They want you to learn one at a time. Fighting games don't do that. They just kind of throw you out there and say, hey, here's your character, learn all of this. And yet, whenever I look up videos of somebody trying to teach someone else how to play fighting games, they always give them one or two moves and tell them, okay, let's keep doing that over and over until you've got that down. We've got to practice these moves one at a time. But as I said before, most players don't want to just sit there in training mode, just practicing the same one thing over and over, only to go into the game and find out that the other player isn't going to stand there like a training dummy. But by starting you off with only the basic moves for each character, this game forces you to learn them one at a time. It forces you to practice that one thing until you have ranked it up, and now you can move on to the next skill. Now, as I said, you get several other rewards for ranking up your teachers, and we'll get to them in a sec, but for now, let's talk about how you rank them up. As I said, it's simple. You just have to actually fight as them. You have to get experience out there in the world tour mode. And that's where the next bit of brilliance comes in with how this game trains you. This whole world is filled with characters ready to duke it out. Either criminals looking to start some trouble, trained martial artists looking to win a tournament, some random guy on the street who just happened to be in the way of your Honda headbutt. Engage. And so many of these encounters are designed to teach you how to fight. I remember early in the game, I was at like rank five or six and someone at rank 20 came running up to me and I thought I was done for. They were way too powerful for me. But as soon as the fight began, they just started blocking and they kept blocking. Sure, they attacked every now and again, but for the most part, they just blocked. And it felt so weird for me to see an enemy just walk up to me and then block. But that's when it hit me. Oh, the entire point of this opponent is to teach the player how to throw. The only way to take these enemies down is to throw them, which you've been told earlier in the game is an unblockable attack. So these opponents exist specifically to tell you to take what you have learned in your training and then apply it in an actual match. And there's so many other examples of this. There are opponents who just throw wrenches at you and they're so annoying. I found myself thinking, God, why would you put enemies in here that do nothing but just fill up the screen with projectiles? And then it hit me. Of course they're annoying. They're zoners. These opponents are designed specifically to teach you how to get around projectiles and deal with zoners. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a sonic boom. And those are the more basic fights. There are total oddball fights against robots who feel like they're in here just to break the rules, but no, they're here to teach you specific lessons as well. There's drones that attack you from the sky. They are there to teach you about anti-air attacks. There's little Roombas flying across the ground. They teach you how to attack and block low. There's fridges that can suck you in and slam you around. They're there to teach you about grapplers. And there's other popular fighting game series out there with oddball fights where they add four or five different modifiers in there, and they're fun. They're great for trying something new. But as much as I hate saying it, do you ever learn anything from those? When you have the earth shaking and gravity is turned off and lightning is randomly striking and your punches make you explode, are you really learning anything about the game or are you just trying to survive all the weird twists? Well, in World Tour mode, everything serves a purpose and it's all meant to teach you a lesson. And as I mentioned earlier, it's important when teaching players something in a video game that you don't make it feel like you're teaching them, but you make it feel like they're playing a video game. Let me put it to you like this. 
Let's use Double May Cry as an example. It's another Capcom owned game with heavily customizable combat, but that game doesn't start you off in a white grid telling you to just practice each sword swipe until you've got all down packed. Then moving on to how to combo sword slashes into gun juggles, then forcing you to learn how to hop off of an enemy, and so on and so on. No, it's a game! They just put you into the field and then they give you different enemies that force you to learn how to use your abilities and by doing that you'll then be encouraged to learn how to mix all that together on your own, making it more fun and rewarding. And it's amazing to me that finally, after character action games figured out how to do this two freaking decades ago, we finally have a fighting game taking on this same approach. And it works. I've seen so many people online not even realizing that's what these fights are doing. I saw one guy streaming World Tour Mode, and he is not a fighting game player, not at all. But he was going up against these enemies who kept blocking. So he kept attacking them over and over and over, and they just kept blocking everything, and he was starting to get frustrated with it. But then he threw them, and it worked. And he threw them again and again, and he kept throwing them over and over, and he actually said at one point, I can't believe these guys are just going to let me keep doing this, but hey, if they're going to keep blocking, I'm gonna keep throwing them. Yes, yes, exactly. That's how you play fighting games. If you find something that works against an opponent and that opponent refuses to respond to it, keep doing it. This game was teaching this guy one of the core fundamentals of fighting games, and he didn't even realize it. He just thought, haha, this computer is so dumb. The computer isn't dumb, it just made you a little bit smarter. But here's where the lessons start to get really nitty gritty. There are items that you can collect in World Tour, either items you can use in combat to change your stats around, heal life back, gifts you can give to your teachers, or most importantly, clothing to customize your avatar with because what's the point of running around town sucker punching everyone you see unless you can look good doing it? And how do you get these items? Well, you can find a handful of them around the city, but the vast majority of them will be earned in combat. When you start a fight, you'll see that each opponent has various goals that you can hit to earn an item. And these goals, you guessed it, continue teaching you how to fight. Some stuff will be basic like defeat them using Ryu style, but this will encourage you to learn how to use Ryu. But then, some of them will be more specific like hit an opponent with an aerial attack while they're in the air. Which might not sound like much, but when you try and pull off this goal, you'll find yourself standing there and thinking, okay, I have to watch for when they jump. I have to learn how to spot when they're about to jump at me, and then I have to think about what attack of mine can actually counter that. Which attack of mine will be able to hit them in the air before they hit me? And before you know it, this game just taught you how to deal with enemies that won't stop jumping. Or the craziest example for me came late in the game. I was going up against an enemy and they had a special item that I won. I don't even remember what it was, but I didn't have it, so of course I wanted it. But to get it, I had to trigger pressure time twice. Now, pressure time is something they give opponents in World Tour mode where they will glow when there's an opening. Basically, it's a way to teach players when they can counterattack for big damage. Again, great feature to teach you how to play. But this enemy only had pressure time glow for them for a split second in between the first and second punch that they threw out in a three hit combo. The window of when to attack them to hit pressure time was so small and their range was so long with their punches that I found myself walking back and forth having to test out which of my punches were long enough but also fast enough to hit them right in that sweet spot between these two punches and eventually, after I found the exact attack to use at the exact right moment to hit that pressure time, I shouted out, oh my god, this game just taught me footsies and I didn't even realize it. And as I said, a lot of the goals to pull off are far simpler, things like do five dry parries, but that's still teaching people because when you give players tons of abilities, which Street Fighter VI does, you'd be shocked how many players forget what they can do. So just putting a little goal into the fight like, hey, do a drive impact. There is a chunk of the people playing this game who are going to read that and think, oh right, I totally forgot I could even do that. But this secret teaching method goes beyond just these fights. It's in every single corner of this game. 
Let's say you need to buy some items to help you in combat, or you just want to get that new jacket to dress up your avatar. Well, you're going to need money for that. And you can get that money through fighting, but you can also get it through part-time jobs. Yes, there are part-time jobs that you can take on in this game for money, and hey, you'll never believe it. They're also designed to teach you how to play fighting games. There's a bottle breaking game that makes you charge in one direction, then press in the opposite direction and hit a button, and I did that about two or three times thinking, well, this is an odd little mini game. And then suddenly it hit me, oh my god, this is teaching you how to do charge attacks. Then there's a pizza making game, and you make the pizza by combining different ingredients, and you combine the ingredients by matching the directions the buttons show you on screen. I thought it was a fairly cute mode, but nothing special. And then I moved on to the medium difficulty, and now instead of just pressing forward and triangle, I was pressing down, down forward, and forward triangle. You know, the input for a Hadouken. And then it makes you do SRKs, and 360 motions, and pretzel motions. This minigame is here to teach you how to do special move inputs. But if you're a more casual fan, you might never realize that's what you're learning. You're just going to keep doing the short Yugen input until you get perfect because you just want to hear the announcer cheer on. And before you know it, you've now practiced these inputs so many times that you can now do them in your sleep. As I said, it is important to learn these inputs by doing them over and over again until you get it right. But doing that in a training mode is really, really boring. But when you've got a pizza jumping up on screen and the announcer screaming out, and by doing it, you're in point a brand new drawing of Zengi for Ryu fighting food. Yeah, that's actually kind of awesome, and it makes you want to keep doing it, and oh my goodness, I can now do an SRK just fine. And there's still so much more you can do in these worlds. I briefly mentioned there are side quests, and these side quests, yeah, you know where I'm going with this by now. They teach you how to play fighting games. Several of the side quests are basic things. Go and find this item, go and turn on this thing, go eat food at this place, nothing special but a lot of them are missions that force you to go and fight. Sure, there are the very clear tutorial missions. There's about three characters in the world who will just constantly pop up and tell you to do things like, hey, hit me with a drive impact two times, block for 10 seconds straight, very clearly teaching you to do one thing at a time. But there are multiple other missions like, hey, the Mad Gear gang was spotted over there, go fight them, or go and meet this character who can teach you how to do this thing, or, I need you to sneak into this place that is loaded with enemies that are all going to do this one particular thing, and you're going to have to learn how to deal with that. So, now that we got all that established, let's go back to the idea of the loop. You want to rank up your teachers, so you have to go and fight as them. You rank up, and then unlock a brand new side quest. That side quest has you fighting some more. Now, because you fought some more, you got a special item, but you need another item to complete that set. So, you unlock that brand new item by fighting some more. And by now, all that fighting means you've leveled up your teacher, so you go back to them to get a brand new move to use. So you want to try that new move out, so you end up going and fighting another person, and that other person ends up using another teacher's style, and by fighting that character, you rank up that teacher. So you go and you talk to that other teacher, and that teacher then gives you their own move. So you want to try that move out, so now you're fighting as this other teacher's style, and you end up going and finding some other people to rank them up. But by ranking them up, you end up unlocking a mission, and that mission introduces you to a new teacher, so you want to try them out, and you end up fighting in their style, and then all of a sudden you remember, oh man, it's been a while since I used that first teacher style. So you end up using that first teacher style and you end up going back to them and then they give you a brand new mission. And every single thing that I just described as part of this loop is there to teach you. As long as you are doing something in this game, you are learning. Every action that you are doing in this loop is teaching you certain mechanics, how to handle different opponents, and how to respond to different scenarios. And that's why I think this is the best single player mode in any fighting game. It makes learning fun. That sounded less corny in my head, but you get the idea. As I said, there are so many other fighting games with really fun single player modes, but as much as I enjoy these modes, it feels so refreshing to have one that is actually about, you know, fighting in a fighting game and actually tries to teach you how to do that. And for a specific audience out there, World Tour Mode makes learning these lessons enticing. 
There are so many reasons to get into fighting games. Many reasons why people decide they want to pick up a series for the very first time. It might be the mechanics, it might be the community, it might be that they saw someone do a really cool combo and they said, I want to learn how to do that. But I guarantee you, there is a sizable portion of people who buy fighting games who do it because of the characters. They do it because they saw a character that they thought looked cool and they wanted to check them out. And World Tour Mode realizes that audience does exist. That is indeed a percentage of the people who buy fighting games. And maybe, just maybe, the audience buying these games just because they like the characters might need a little help learning how to play. I already touched on this, but just to go into further details about, when you level up your teachers, you can unlock brand new moves, you can unlock side quests, but the main thing that you unlock with each level is just more dialogue with that character. And I've already said it, but the story in World Tour mode, not good, nearly non-existent, is the least important part of this entire mode. It's just there to give you things to do. However, I can only assume that's because Capcom picked up all the writing talent they had, and moved them away from the story of the game and told them to focus all of their energy on making the cast of Street Fighter VI as charming and likable as humanly possible, and that's exactly what they did. The amount of dimensions and backstory that you get on these characters is massive. You could go into the game as either a brand new player or a longtime Street Fighter fan, and you'll still walk away from this thing with a brand new appreciation for these characters. I talked about this on Twitter and I got so many replies from people saying, I never liked Ryu, now he's my favorite fighting game character. I never cared for Kami, now I love that character. The interactions that you get with the Street Fighter characters might be some of the best character work any fighting game has ever done with their cast. And Capcom realized that a lot of people out there wanted that. I mean, heck, why do you think story modes and fighting games have become so popular lately? Because people like fighting game characters. So, for that specific audience, Capcom gave them exactly what they wanted. As long as they're willing to work for it. Yes, as I said, if you already love fighting games for the mechanics, for the competition, for the head-to-head -head combat, then you don't need to be taught how to play fighting games. But if you just said, I really think Chun-Li is cool and I want to know more about her, then Capcom will give that to you. If you go out there and hit the streets and learn how to play fighting games, but not just learn how to play fighting games, you need to learn how to play as Chun-Li. You have to fight under her style if you want to get more interactions with her. If you want to learn more about Chun-Li, if you want to get to know more about her past and see more about who she is, you have to become a Chun-Li main. And that's kind of brilliant. And hey, for a lot of those people out there who aren't that into fighting games, they just thought these characters looked cool, yeah, learning how to play fighting games, it can be tough. You're gonna lose a lot. You're gonna end up facing some hard times trying to get better at these characters. And it feels almost like Capcom realized that some people out there might get discouraged because in addition to actually just being really charming, so many of the Street Fighter characters are designed to be your personal coaches. They're designed to just give you motivation. Hearing E Honda tell you that nobody ever got stronger without losing, that's a lesson that a lot of people are going to need to hear if this is their first fighting game. And Zangief telling you that good things await you if you just keep training, man, I'm not even joking, that speech got me to go back to the gym. You can do it! Put your heart into it! Left! There! A bit more! Good things await! Come on! Yes! Capcom knew exactly what they were doing with these character interactions, and it's so smart. So, okay, I've laid out how World Tour is designed around the combat of fighting games. It took what you do in fighting games and found a way to make a whole long single player mode built entirely around that, while teaching you how to actually play fighting games without making you realize you're being taught, and giving you an incentive to actually go out there and actually fight. But I know what a lot of people are going to say. There are people out there who I can feel it, they are just ready to start typing, not everyone is going to learn. Not everyone is going to engage with this mode in the way that you described. Or, heck, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who will just buy a bunch of gifts in this game and then load up that one character that they want the costume for, get the costume, and then leave without learning a thing. 
or maybe they'll go all the way through the single player mode, not getting better and not learning anything, and they'll just get a bunch of health items and use them to keep healing until they tank their way through the game. You know what? You're right. Not everyone is going to learn and improve. Not everyone is going to absorb the lessons this game tries to teach them. You're absolutely right. And that is 100% okay. That is the other reason why I love World Tour Mode. I mentioned earlier that there is nothing wrong with single player content in fighting games that are just there for fun. That's just its own weird, unique side thing. And hey, Street Fighter VI has plenty of that. Have you played Extreme Battles? Extreme Battles is legit. That is insanely fun. But I appreciate that World Tour is built around fighting, around the mechanics of the game, and how it teaches that to people who might not normally understand it. But World Tour is also great because it still lets you go at your own pace. Not everyone is going to adapt to something at the same pace. Not everyone is going to learn something in the same way. And not everyone wants to learn. These are video games, after all. Sometimes you just want to hit some buttons and see some cool stuff happen. And Street Fighter VI's World Tour mode lets you do that too. As I said, this mode teaches you so much about fighting games, and it's great that a lot of that teaching isn't explained to you. They put you in situations that force you to learn it on your own. But if you don't want to do any of that, if you don't want to walk away from this game learning the fundamentals of the genre, you can still just create your own freaky OC and have fun interacting with characters and punching random people on the street and getting into fights throwing out fireballs and when the game gets too hard just chug some energy drinks and heal yourself back until you win. It is totally possible to play the game like that, because World Tour Mode lets you go at your own pace. And when it comes to learning fighting games, going at the pace that you want and going as deep or surface level as you want is very important. So many people get turned off from fighting games because they go online and they look up a tutorial on how to play and how to learn all the ins and outs of the fighting game and they see that video 1 of 278 and they go, yeah, this is a little too much for me. I'm, uh, I'm not going to get that into it. And they just turn away. Fighting games for a large chunk of the audience out there can feel intimidating. It can feel like way too much to try and learn all that. So if you want to create a single player mode in your fighting game that is going to teach people how to play fighting games, you have to be okay if they don't want to learn. You have to be okay with the idea that some people just want to have fun in their video game, and if they end up learning something along the way, that's great. If not, hey, as long as they can enjoy themselves, that's still important. And the massive playground that World Tour creates follows that philosophy. But if you do play the game all the way through, if you do learn all the lessons, if you do soak in what this game is about and this single player mode ends up giving you that itch, that feeling like you want to keep going, do you know how World Tour mode ends? I mentioned that the story of this game ends with the big villain saying none of this mattered, which again is kind of a weird way to end your story, but that's for speculations elsewhere. But that's how the story ends. Do you know how World Tour mode itself ends? As soon as the story ends and the credits are all done rolling, you get sent right back to the beginning of the game. You get sent right back to the very center of Metro City where your quest began. And then they give you one brand new mission. To find the meaning of strength. And do you know how you do that? You walk up to someone and they'll ask you if you feel like you've done everything there is to do in Metro City. And if you say yes, then they will tell you, okay, well, let me tell you about something called the Battle Hub, a place where other fighters, guys like you from all over the world, come to duke it out. And that battle never ends. So if you've enjoyed what you've done here, then check out the Battle Hub. This single player mode doesn't just teach you how to play fighting games. It all leads up to the big reveal of, hey, congrats, you graduated, you did it. We've been training you this entire time to get you ready to go online and fight other people, and now it's time that you leave the nest. And I don't think anything can sum up what's so great about World Tour Mode more than the fact that someone can go into this just because they're thinking, yeah, you know what, it looks okay, and I saw this person playing it online, and it looked really silly, they were punching some people on the street, and they made this goofy-looking character in the character creation, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna check that out, it seems like a fun time. And then after spending several hours in this mode, 
they can walk away from it going, you know what? I am ready to go out there and play other people. I know it's going to be tough, but nobody ever got stronger without losing. And good things await you if you end up trying. And I have experience now. I've learned the basics. And I now know how to play fighting games. And that's why World Tour Mode is the best single player mode in any fighting game. Thank you guys very much for tuning in today. We don't normally do these one-off little videos examining just specific parts of a video game, but as I said, Street Fighter 6 has been consuming my life for the past month, and I know a lot of you guys out there are waiting on the next part of the Street Fighter retrospective video, which don't worry, I'm working on that right now, but uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. The next part of the video is going to be big, like really, really big. So I want to make some other Street Fighter video to kind of tide you guys over. And as I was playing through World Tour mode, I was just so constantly blown away by how smart it was in the way it was designed to teach you how to play these games. So yeah, I feel like someone out there needs to compliment that. I feel like somebody out there needs to talk about that because most of the people I've seen talking about World Tour mode have just talked about how weird and goofy it is. Which, don't get me wrong, it's very weird and goofy. That's part of its charm. But yeah, it is such a brilliant mode, so if you have not yet checked out World Tour Mode, if you have not checked out Street Fighter 6, because I don't know, maybe you've been feeling a little bit intimidated about, don't be. World Tour Mode is a great mode for anybody of any skill level who has any interest in fighting games. I highly recommend it. But if you have played through it, let me know what you think about this game in the comments down below. Or you can always contact me on Twitter at Thorgies Arcade. If Twitter still exists by the time that you're watching it. Uh, I should also note we're also on Tumblr and Instagram at Thorgies Arcade. Oh, and um, Threads. We're also trying out Threads. That's the new one this week that everyone's doing. Yeah, we're also on Threads. We'll give that a shot. Why not? And you can come catch us on Twitch at Professor Thorgy, where we do the occasional streaming. And if you enjoy these videos, but you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, then go ahead and click that subscribe button and ring that bell. We're trying to hit 80,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and we're doing pretty well right now. You guys have really been showing up to support this channel, and I thank you for that. So if you want to make sure that we hit that goal, make sure you click that subscribe button, share these videos around the web. I really do appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in, everyone. Stay safe out there, and come back next time.